welcome to another episode of Modular in a Week. Today will be the last episode of day 10 with sequencers as a theme uh, because I think we've been in this day for ages. There was so much stuff to do with the baby 8 and then all the other stuff that we've done. So this is the final piece of the sequencer puzzle and today we're going to look at the quantizer. So the quantizer is basically, um, it takes the CV signal and matches it to the, the old analog ones, just matches to the chromatic scale, the, the microcontroller based ones where you can define your own scales, can, uh, can set the voltage, the CV voltage to whatever scale you want. So, but, but basically it takes the very analog sliding CV voltage and defines it as notes, the defined notes of whatever scale you have. Uh, so basically an auto-tune for CV. For this I started um, doing an old analog one. So here's the beginning of a an an ARP style quantizer using the AD7245. So it's either the AD7245 that you need to use or there's a few uh, newer modules uh, that uses the DAC0800 something like that. So the, the, those are DACs or DACs, digital to analog converters um, and that is together together with uh, a 398 LMLF 398 so a sample and hold so it just goes through these whatever 12 steps probably and just decides which note is it that this one has the 807245 that I made uh, the circuit 4 it's an obsolete part so unfortunately um, it's very expensive and I bought one on eBay for I think seven dollars or something like that for one chip so uh, maybe not the best um, approach uh, the other one 0800 is a bit cheaper because it's still made and you can buy that in many different uh, packages but while I was waiting for that chip to arrive I started I found another uh, on uh, Muff Wiggler I think and also while looking through um, Barton Musical Circuits uh, site I found one of his early work so uh, if you haven't been to BMC Barton Musical Circuits uh, link in the description he has loads of really interesting projects many are open source uh, and uh, you get the schematics and all that uh, but some of them are uh, that you need to buy a pre-programmed chip for uh, and also a PCB. Uh, so I didn't do that but so he has two different on his site he has two different quantizers and the most simple one that just uses the chromatic scale he uh, the first version of that he has as code on Muff Wiggler also a link in the description so if you have a PIC programmer, so this is not Arduino, this is PIC, uh, this is uh, is it microchips version of, uh, of the same thing and they have a completely different uh, way of programming their chips which I know nothing about. Uh, so I'm not doing this in Arduino. I'm doing it in PIC and thereby circumventing my little uh, rule that I'm not allowed to do anything with Arduino yet. So, yeah, I found a loophole. So this is uh, instead a much simpler circuit uh, with a really ch cheap chip if you can program it yourself and if you instead choose to buy it from uh, pre-programmed with loads of more interesting features and, and uh, other uh, scales as well that you can use from Barton uh, that 
I think it costs fourteen dollars so it's just twice the price and you get a much better quantizer. So I did this one and then this one worked so well that I actually didn't finish building this one so this will now go in my to build some time. I really want to go on and, and continue to the next day in this series and therefore I ended here. Lots of rambling. Uh, I'll show you where you can find the uh, files and stuff like that. I will not show you how to program a PIC. You need a special programmer for that. I don't know, might be able to make a programmer with an Arduino. I was looking into that, realized that this took way too much time. Uh, so I'll leave that up to you or uh, to look at the uh, at the BMC one that you can buy. Or I'll also put the link to these ones that you can uh, build instead. So let's look at um, how we build this, where we found it and what you can do with it. Let's go. If we begin with the first schematics with the AD7245 that I wanted and tried to uh, make from the beginning, uh, this is this simple circuit. Um, it, used, it was the quantizer that used the least amount of circuits. So a 40, uh, first of all, an LF412 connected like a 25 kilohertz oscillator uh, that uh, is controlling a CD4024 uh, which uh, then out which is a binary counter I guess which then goes into the DAC so it takes these digital signals and outputs a analog signal here so here comes a it's called a staircase generator I think uh, so these are and this trim pot here should then um, trim to uh, uh, span one volt for 12 steps and this would then go into ah uh, yeah here is the falling re staircase reference output which then goes into uh, the LF398 sample and hold uh, and you get the CV input here and that would then decide which tone or note to play on the quantized out output. But I didn't finish this one and also this chip is really expensive. Then there is the same chip uh, and a different design by Scott Stites. Uh, I'll put a link in the description. This is just half of the circuit out to the so here's the DAC staircase out and then you need the LF398 circuit as well which you can see here so this is for two channels so they use the DAC staircase and goes out and into two of these uh, LF398s um, and again the LF398 is quite expensive and the the AD7245 is definitely expensive, so maybe not a good option. And then we have the Phonitronic quantizer as well. Uh, so he uses the DAC0800, uh, so, which is a newer chip and probably much cheaper. Again, doing two of these outputs uh, with the 398. I'll put link uh, to all of these uh, in the description, of course. Then we have BartonMusicalCircuits.com. This is an awesome site. Uh, if you haven't been here, BartonMusicalCircuits.com. Uh, I really suggest you go here. He has so many interesting boards, uh, both for sale and many that are open source. The first one, BMC001, is a simple CV quantizer. And this one is a dual one and as I said before you can buy this price for one board and one pre-programmed pre PIC is $14. But the thing is that down here 
is a link to a thread on Electro Music, uh, and if we go there, here is another link to another f uh, post on Electro Music CV Quantizer Project 12F683 version. Uh, and here you have a simple schematics, and then we have the assembly code for the quantizer using PIC 16F684 uh, and also oh look here's even the very mode quantizer so here's so for variable uh, quantization I didn't see that and a bit down there is also a file all tables, uh, assembly code for variable mode CV quantizer. Uh, I guess you need to be able to uh, code a bit to do that uh, and I really haven't looked at the code in any way. I just did this really simple circuit and I added this code uh, in the uh, pick basic yeah, or not pick basic pick yeah, starter kit something uh, that I had lying around and this is a much simpler circuit uh, because I use a power supply that has 5 volts I can actually skip this whole thing uh, just have a 20 megahertz crystal the 16F684 and the and then yeah the output buffer and this That's is it. the whole circuit, so not very much to it. Uh, this big red board here is just another one of my one of my many PCBs that I've made the last year. So it's just a larger SMD to through hole adapter that takes up to 28 pin uh, boards. And because I didn't have a through hole uh, 16F. 684 uh, so I bought a SMD one and just put it on this one and then the 20 megahertz crystal the output buffer and then I used uh, the the front panel from the ARP style CV quantizer that I was supposed to do so that's a bit misleading but this is what is behind it And again, here is what I started with uh, for the ARP style quantizer. And uh, as you can see, I didn't get to fit all those ICs on one uh, proto board, so I actually had to put one on the side, like so. That would have worked, I guess, but I chose to uh, just do this one instead. So let's go and listen what it sounds like when you use a quantizer. Alright, so what we have here is uh, LFO going into a mixer uh, with the CV going into CV input and the CV output from the quantizer is going into the exponential CV of a VCO. This is not a very well tuned oscillator I want to point out. And so if we take this signal directly, it would sound like this. So a very nice sinus curve there, or a, not a sinus curve, a triangle curve. Uh, but instead, when it goes through the CV, it has the notes that it slowly goes through. If we instead take our uh, sequencer, and now we get the notes, <laughs> if it had been tuned well, we would get the correct notes. And uh, yeah, there's nothing more to it than that, really. But we can make some really interesting floating uh, melodies if we combined the sequencer and the LFO, for example. Now we get this one along with the with the slowly 
LFO. And here we start to hear a little twiddling. Uh, and I think I added another one. So here's another one, a, another triangle that is also very slow. And if we add that one as well. You get really nice. It's almost like uh, someone playing a fiddle. Irish folk music or something. And then we add some bass drum to this. <laughs> something like that. And it's just a... Uh, even though it's a simple module, you can still, by just combining CV, we can make some really fun generative uh, music with this. this little module I'm done with day 10. Sequencers have finally come to an end and I think we have enough for now and once we start doing it with Arduino it's go I'm going to make way more uh, sequencers because I think in that programming environment it is much easier and the expression that you can do with Arduino uh, in, in all this um, sequencer stuff is really interesting but we all have to just wait a while longer until we get there so next episode will be a new day and I think I have decided that next day is going to be inputs inputs and controls uh, the the next two episodes or uh, the next two days uh, was going to be either effects or inputs and controls so that's the two next day so but I think I've found the best way to go is with uh, inputs and controls first and all th these two days will go out of the box a bit I will that will really yeah I, I I will space out a bit. I think yeah, it won't be this only this format. It will be a bit out of this out of this box. Uh, but we'll see what happens uh, in the next episode and forward from that. Of course, uh, I hope you are all subscribing so you don't miss all the things that is coming. I want to say thank you to all my Patreons who not only subscribe but also uh, support me over on Patreon and uh, make a lot of this possible for me to do. Uh, thank you so much for that everyone over there. Uh, for that they get a few extra perks uh, and see all the things that doesn't go as right always um, over there. I tried to uh, fix a Matrix 1000 a couple of weeks ago and uh, blew a fuse in my house. Uh, that was interesting. Uh, but anyway, uh, thank you everyone. Uh, take care and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.